tell you guys how to tell the difference. There's a lot of them, but we're going to show you three easy things, okay? First thing is you look at their ears. Sea lions have little ear flaps on the outside called oracles. Good. Look at our seals. They just have little openings on the side. Another way you can tell are the flippers. Good, there they are. Good. Sea lions have much larger flippers than a seal, but that dramatically affects how they move on land. If you watch Cora, she can walk belly off the ground, wait, on all four flippers. Good. Oh wait, good. She can support her weight on the front. Good job. Now seals, little tiny flippers with big claws, they're not built to support body weight. So on land, this is as far right as the seal gets. So when they move, they have to inch and scoot around in their bellies, just like that. Good girl. There's one more even easier way though. You go back on your rock. The sounds that they make. You hear barking on the docks constantly. <laughs> Those are sea lions. Now she sounds a little different because she's young. It sounds like a car that won't start, huh? There it is. <laughs> now seals can make many different sounds, but they rarely ever do. I will say the sound I hear out of those guys the most it's crossed between a snort and a growl, kind of like that. Right. <laughs> but keep in mind, there's also different kinds of sea lions. So Cora is a California yeah. sea lion. Now, if, if she were a stellar sea lion, the sound is way different. We actually trained her to make a stellar sea lion noise. It sounds something like this. Good girl. <laughs> All right, now, those are some ways that they're different. There's a lot of things they share in common. If they're in the wild, they have the same predators to worry about. And I think we all agree, one of the biggest predators out in the ocean are sharks. Bye bye. Who's a shark, Cora? Look, she's a shark. Good girl. Now, the way a sea lion escapes a shark in the wild is really impressive. Sharks are very efficient predators. They're not easy to get away from. When a shark hunts, they have these sensors in their nose and up to three miles away in the ocean, they can detect their prey because we all have electricity in our body. Now, let, sea lions can swim up to 25 miles an hour to get away. Unfortunately, there's some sharks out there that can swim up to 70 miles an hour. So that's a problem. Now, let's say Cora's miles offshore. She's very aware that a shark is now pursuing her. They have a really cool way to confuse a shark enough to buy him some time to get a head start. Now, we'll show you. All the way to the safety of shore, Cora would do this if you knew a shark was after her. Nice. Higher. Nice, Cora. Higher. All the way up. Good. All right, now what that's going to do is if she's not underwater, it is impossible for a shark to detect her. So by jumping all the way to shore, the shark's going to get a peek and a glimpse here and there, but it's going to take him that much longer to pinpoint exactly where she is and where she's headed. Let's say things get worse. That shark's getting awfully close, and she's nowhere near shore. Plan B is instead of swimming to shore, now she's going to detour to the biggest rock jetting out of the ocean there. Once she gets to that rock, she's going to do this. Girl. Wow. Now, not much a shark can do except circle that rock and wait her out. And if the shark tries to wait her out, he's going to forget what he's waiting for. Mm -hmm. These animals can stay on dry land without touching water for five days straight. Four is a three-year-old, so if she managed to get away from a shark, she'd sit up on that rock and stick her tongue out. Come on. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you find the shark. Good girl. All right, while she's up there, I want to show you a newer behavior we've been practicing, so bear with me here. Whoa. Take a bow. Ta -da. There it is. All right. All right. Now, when Cora first arrived, she was barely a year old. There we go. And uh, there's really important things a young animal has to be trained before we can. Behaviors. For example. She's got to learn things for vet work. That's called a husbandry behavior. But I'm going to show you guys something that we had to train her really early on to ensure her safety with us here. So uh, when we first got Cora here with us, she was barely a year old. She was half this size. <laughs> and we only had her for one month. And a customer was out here taking photos on his phone. He was standing over on this side. It slipped out of his hand completely on accident. She looks at me like, hey, there's something cool over there. So as I'm coming over to get it, she beats me to it, grabs it, and takes off from the pool with it. And I'm out here for three hours trying to get this thing back. So here she's going to jump on it. Shame on you. She did not want to give it up. So we tricked her into letting it go. I distracted her. Another trainer grabbed it with a net. 
And I got to thinking, this is probably going to happen again. We might not get so lucky next time. And I want to be confident that if she gets a hold of something like that, she'll bring it to me if I ask for it. So here's what we did. We pretty much taught her to play fetch. Although, the signal for her to retrieve these objects and bring them back is the act of something falling into the environment or the pool. Very much like this. But she now knows, instead of playing with it, she knows that if she brings it back to me quickly, she can get some fish for it. Now, here's the cool part. It's foolproof. Doesn't matter how cool that object was to her, how much she wanted to play with it, she'll opt out for fish no matter what. Because at three years old, she's already eating 13 pounds of fish daily. Whoops. Wow. You're so nice. <laughs> yeah. See, if something Yay. fell in, and that's still a signal. Now, just to make sure she didn't think it was just the rings, we had to change the object. So check this out. She likes to bring up, if there's more than one thing that falls in, she's obsessed with bringing them back at the same time. But she can't always fit everything in her mouth. So watch this girl problem solve. This is hilarious. <laughs> you got there, love. Thank you. Good girl. Good job. Take it back. Ta da! Right. <laughs> the funny thing is, um, we didn't train her to figure stuff out like that out. She does that on her own. So, very, very intelligent. Now, one of the very first show behaviors we established is a classic. You ready? Whee! Oh, nice save, nice save. Good. Now normally this would take an average of a week to two weeks to train an animal to do this. Cora had this down to day three. To the point where she could swim and walk with it. Balance, pick it up. Hold it. Alright, girl, they walk with me. Go to walk. Hold it. You realize you're traveling, right? Yeah, you should be durable there. Okay. Good girl. Da -da -da. All right. <laughs> she pretty much folds in half. You can take her as carry on in a flight. Fold her up. Okay. All right. Now, uh, last but not least, when I come to a place like this, I cannot wait to watch animals like Cora do the jumps and the flips. That's the hardest thing to train. It can take months. It can take years. Some animals won't even pick up on it. You have to move on. Cora is not even old enough to start that kind of training. Not for another couple of years. However. I've done this for a long time. I've worked with a lot of animals. She's learning three times faster than any of them. So I looked at the other trainer and I said, you know what, let's try to train her a jump or a flip. If she doesn't pick up on it, whatever, we'll move on. But I think she can, and if she does, she'll be one of the youngest. And we, she picked up on two of them. So I'm going to show you the back flip right there. Big one. What? Is she going to do it again? Here goes. Woo! Last but not least, these guys, they jump really high. Did you guys think that jump to the deck was impressive? Yeah. Okay, for a three year old, it's not bad, right? They, that was a very effortless jump. They can do it much higher than that. We're going to have Cora jump up and touch that white ball, and that's actually still a forgiving jump. So keep your eyes on it. It's going to be She's going to jump again.